Hey, I'm Mike Beckerell, and today we're going to take a look at how Jimmy Weibel would play two different versions of an arpeggio at the same time. Let's take a look. I got this concept from Jimmy's piece, Slightly Blue, which you can find in the Jimmy Weibel solo collection. I highly recommend getting that book if you don't have it. Every single piece is full of ideas. And this idea I got is only two beats worth of material from this piece that Jimmy wrote, but I've gotten a ridiculous amount of ideas from just those two beats. So let's take a look. So the piece starts with this. <laughs> And it keeps moving, and it's it's really beautiful. It's a really cool piece. I recommend learning it if you haven't. But those first two beats, Jimmy's playing a C major seven arpeggio in two different versions at the same time. When I saw that, it was like a huge light bulb went off for me, and I decided I need to move this through all the inversions and take this through different chord types because this can be a big part of my comping, my solo arranging, and even my improvisations. So when we look at this. We're gonna look at this at two voices at first until it becomes easy. So for the bottom voice, we have a C major 7 arpeggio in root position. So we start on the root. C, E, G, B. 1, 3, 5, 7 in order. The treble voice is a C major 7 arpeggio in third inversion, starting on the seventh. So B, C, E, G. We play those together. And to kind of make sense of this, I kind of view it as whatever note we have in the bass, we go up three tones in the arpeggio, and that's what we have in the top voice. So if we start on the root, we go up three tones in the arpeggio, three, five, seven, and we land on B. And then that'll hold true through each of these notes. So let's take it through the inversions. So for first inversion, we'll start on E, and our arpeggio will be E, G, B, C. Starting on the third, we're going to go five, seven, root. So we have a third and a root together. And then we're going to do that same thing for each note. Next note would be the fifth, so we'll have the third on the top. And the seventh, we'll have the fifth on top. And the root will have the seventh on top. Now go to the next inversion. Start on the fifth. Five, seven, root, third. So from the fifth, we'll have the third on top. Seventh, we'll have the fifth on top. Root will have the seventh on top. And the third, we'll have the root on top. And then we'll go to the next inversion, which is the seventh. So we have seven, root, third, fifth. So we'll start with the seventh and the fifth together. Root in the in the seventh. Third in the root. Fifth in the third. Now, as far as fingerings are concerned, you don't have to necessarily do it the way I'm fingering it, because I can see that a bunch of possibilities are out there for these. I'll show a close up of me going through all these different things. You can see my fingering for it. But definitely feel free to experiment with your own, because it's going to be just as valid as mine. So now the next step would be Let's take these through all the different chord types. If we want to make a major 7 a dominant 7, we just got to lower the 7th. If we wanted to make it a minor 7, we just got to lower the 3rd on top of that. And so forth. And you could take this through all the different chord types, and then again apply it to all the different versions. And then you'll have a ton of material to work with. And for a quick little bonus line, there's an idea I had of how to apply this to a 2-5-1 progression. So we're in the key of B-flat, so C minor 7, F7, B-flat major 7. 
So over the C minor 7, I actually decided to do E flat major 7. That's a really common chord to superimpose over a minor 7, to go up to the 3rd and play a major 7, because it gives you 3rd, 5th, flat 7, and then a ninth on top of it. It's a really colorful sound. So I did that here. And then I just played up with just a regular F7. And then just went down B flat major 7. This is a new concept that I've only been working on for a couple weeks. So taking it to two fives, one six, two fives, you know, any kind of progression I can think of is where I'm going to be taking this to really try to make it a part of me. One more time on that two five. We've got an E flat major seven, which is really C minor seven. Just basic root position F seven. And then B flat major seven. So I hope you enjoyed that lesson. There's a lot, there's a lot here. I was blown away when I saw this, um, and I immediately got to work. Um, I haven't finished learning the piece yet because I've been working so hard on this first two beats, and I haven't even started looking through the rest of the tune for other things I could extract because this really affected me. I thought, this, this, this is valuable. This is huge. So definitely take it through all the different versions with, with major 7, and then apply it to all your different keys, and then apply it to all your different chord types, dominant 7, minor 7. So hope you enjoyed the lesson. Keep practicing. I'll see you next time.